just before we get started, if there are any amethyst orcas in the room, please proceed immediately out to the room across the hall so we can line you up. Thank you. No, that's not the beginning of the thing. <laughs> technological glitch out of the way before we started, so that's great. Uh, we are about to begin, and I would ask that you please all stand as you are able in order to welcome the platform party and the class of OVC 2025. Please stand.
please remain standing while our piper pipes in the platform party. Thank you. Join me in thanking our very own Piper from OBC, Dr. Tony Abrams Og. Thank you, everyone. You may now be seated. milestone of your ORCA's journey towards becoming a veterinarian, such as the professional welcome ceremony and family and friends day back in first year. As a reminder, my name is Dr. Duane Hewson, and I'm the Associate Dean Students and Academic at the Ontario Veterinary College. It is my great honour to be your Master of Ceremonies again today. As a student in our DVM program, our Amethyst Orcas and their supporting casts of family, friends, loved ones, and mentors are part of a very close community. To this end, we are live streaming today's event, and I'd like to pause to acknowledge those from that close community who are joining us remotely to celebrate, including those who are in the overflow room. Thank you for your patience. Even though you're not able to be here in person today, for those of you joining us from home, it's wonderful to have you with us virtually, even still. So thank you for joining us. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to today's ceremony and celebration, which marks the point at which this class begins the final phase of their DVM program. Before I begin, I would like to note that there's been a change to today's program. Dr. Gatero, our Associate Dean Clinical Programs, and the person who see, oversees all the hospitals uh, in which you're about to receive your clinical training, can no longer be with us today, but he has sent via email his very warmest regards to the class and says he will see you soon in the Health Sciences Center. Oh yeah. I'd like to open with the University of Guelph Territorial Acknowledgement, Acknowledgement. To, remind of us our, to remind us of our connection to this land and our Indigenous peoples, both past and present, who are part of us as a collective. The University of Guelph resides on the ancestral lands of the Attawandron people and the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We recognize the significance of the Dish with One Spoon Covenant to this land and offer our respect to our Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, 
and Métis neighbors as we strive to strengthen our relationships together. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people, and taking time to mindfully acknowledge this reminds us of our important connection to the land where we learn and work. Thank you. OVC 2025 Amethyst Orcas, family, friends, loved ones, and mentors, today marks a time of transition for our orcas. For the past three years, the class has engaged in a myriad of lectures, labs, and group discussion activities to develop their knowledge of the broad field of veterinary medicine. They have accrued an unbelievable mountain of knowledge, and they have learned and practiced many key skills. Now it is time to put all of that learning into practice. With only one year to go until they each receive their Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree and recite the veterinarian's oath, the orcas are about to undertake their hardest, yet most rewarding stage of their training. They will begin to activate all of their prior learning and apply it to the clinical setting, first through their externship placement this summer, and then throughout their final year rotations of phase four. Today, each amethyst orca will participate in a formal robing or cloaking which heralds the OVC 2025 orcas reaching the important milestone of donning their white coats and entering clinical practice. We would like to thank the OVC Alumni Association for co-sponsoring the white coats this year for our amethyst orcas and the Canadian Veterinary Medical Association for providing the name tags. Thank you. Today's white coat ceremony is steeped in history and many veterinary schools across the globe similarly mark this important occasion as student veterinarians transition from directed learning to a much more self-directed approach to learning where each person must individually reflect when faced with the unpredictable nature of clinical cases on what gaps in knowledge or skills must be remedied in order to do their best for their patient and their client and for themselves. Up to this point in the DVM program, we had decided what would be taught, what and how you should learn it. And we determined whether you had met the bar in terms of adequate performance to have mastered the learning. Now, while we will still facilitate um, we will still facilitate your learning, and we will still assess your performance. This is entirely to help you navigate your learning as you go forward. Amethyst Orcas, as you don your white coat today, and from here forward, as you enter phase four and beyond, you represent that professional veterinary role even more than ever before. That lifelong commitment to scientific inquiry, continuous self-directed learning, and to practicing evidence-based medicine with the highest integrity. You will individually and independently need to seek to understand, to bravely face your uncertainties and unknowns and say, I need to own this. Only I really know what I need to learn more of so that I can do my best for my patients. Clients will look to you to deliver on their trust in us as veterinarians. Your white coat is so much more than simply a piece of PPE or personal protective equipment. <laughs> it is a symbol to your client. It is a commitment to them and to yourself that as you wear it, you also wear the responsibility to always do your best and hold yourself accountable. Today you will don that white coat and I'm sure you will feel that charge of electric excitement run through you as you take on all of that responsibility. With perhaps a little nervousness, yes, 
but hopefully too with lots of excitement because you should feel excited to take on this next step. You are ready. My congratulations to you in reaching this huge milestone in your training. Let's give our orcas a round of applause. <laughs> to help you celebrate this transition into clinical practice, we have a platform of speakers who represent senior leadership at many levels within the veterinary profession. We're very grateful to have them here with us today to mark this momentous occasion together with you. It is my pleasure to first introduce Dr. Jeff Wichtel, our Dean of the Ontario Veterinary College. Dean Wichtel. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Hewson, and uh, maybe it's not great we have people in the overflow room, but I love that we have an overflow room. So thank you, everyone, for coming out uh, on a Saturday night after a snowstorm and uh, helping us celebrate this, this very important day. Good evening to everyone. Welcome or welcome back to, to the Ontario Veterinary College and the University of Guelph, to students, parents, and all the supporters that are in the room today. And it's, it really is a, a, you know, a very critical milestone in the journey of your learning. Uh, Dr. Houston spoke to it so eloquently. I think, uh, as, I, as I think about these kinds of events, I always try and come up with something a little different to talk about. And um, what's been on my mind a lot in the last year or so is the importance of teams in the delivery of veterinary care. And that, that is a big difference. As you move from year three to year four into your clinical year, so much of what you have learned, so much of what you've been assessed on, you know, has yes, no answers and the multiple choice questions. So many of the competencies that you've achieved are individual ones. As you move into the <laughs> clinical setting, it's much more about teams. Every outcome, every clinical outcome, whether that be a cat, a dog, a horse, a herd, or some national outcome, is going to be the result of a team. And you're going to be a member of that team. In some occasions, you'll be asked to lead that team. So it's a whole new set of competencies that I encourage you to be open to learn about. It's an exciting time, but it's also a time that you learn those life skills that are going to equip you for your time in practice or in whatever clinical or non-clinical sphere of influence you find yourselves. So embrace this idea of learning new competencies related to the team. There's nothing more exciting they mean part of a high-functioning team, whether it be in a clinical setting or otherwise. And think about yourself, your role as an, a team member, but also the ways in which you can support each other. As you're on your growth journey, really think about how you can support the others on your team on their growth journey as well. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sort of envious of what you're about to do because it's such an exciting year that you're entering. So, uh, so congratulations, good luck, uh, I know that you should, be, you should be assured that you know way more than you think, so don't be nervous, uh, and you'll do so well. We're very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean Richtel. The College of Veterinarians of Ontario is the provincial licensing body for veterinarians and one which also protects the public's interests. Dr. Wade Wright is the college's president. He has been practicing in the Ottawa area since graduating from the Ontario Veterinary College in 2003. Since joining the profession, he has sought to give back by collaborating with a number of veterinary organizations, such as the Ontario Veterinary Medical Association, Veterinary Outreach, and the Ottawa Academy of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Wright. School with the paper here. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> you think I'm nervous? Wow. Uh, <laughs> um, Dean Witchell, Dr. Hewson, honored guests, and most importantly, 
members of the OBC class of 2025, the Amethyst Orcas. I had to look up Amethyst just so you know. <laughs> uh, greetings from the College of Veterinarians of Ontario. Our council wishes you well as you enter your final year here at OBC. I graduated from OVC back in 2003. Being here with you today, it, it seems like yesterday. For me, uh, becoming a veterinarian is, is, was the fulfillment of a childhood dream. Although I initially took another career path and became a paramedic, I did ultimately find my way back to this profession, and I'm certainly grateful that I did. Veterinary medicine is filled with so many milestones. Uh, getting that life-changing email that you got into vet school, uh, <laughs> your first rotation, uh, your first surgery, passing the navly, I think that's coming up, <laughs> on and on. So throughout your career, <clears throat> you're going to have many more remarkable moments, learning opportunities and achievements. It's the nature of our expansive and ever-evolving profession. Today is one of those significant milestones. I encourage you to, to reflect on the achievements that brought you to this point. You must be so proud as you pursue the next steps. I want to share with you that one of your classmates, Steph Cox, started her uh, veterinary journey at my clinic back when I, <coughs> excuse me, when I was in high school. For me, it's so uh, gratifying to see Steph achieve her goal after so many years of hard work. So it's a, a really nice full circle moment. <clears throat> it's an exciting time at the college. Uh, earlier this month, we welcomed the provincial uh, government's introduction of the Enhancing Professional Care uh, for Animals Act. <clears throat> and uh, which will form the new legislative framework for the regulation of the veterinary profession in Ontario. Our college has been working with the Ontario Association of Veterinary Technicians and the Ontario Veterinary Medical Association um, towards this goal for many, many years. <clears throat> As you move towards licensure yourselves, I encourage you to be attentive to future developments. <clears throat> our, our council is very pleased with this opportunity to strengthen public protection and to reflect current veterinary practice more accurately. <clears throat> As a veterinarian, you are distinguished by your commitment to society and the service to animals and to public health. Being a member of a profession is a privilege and it has meaning in society. It tells the public that you've undertaken training and education and they have specialized knowledge and skills. In addition to those important skills, you're expected to be competent, ethical, and professional. <clears throat> you're expected to meet standards and to be committed to lifelong learning. The college is your partner in delivering safe, quality veterinary care. The quality of veterinary medicine in Ontario reflects our shared commitment to both animal welfare, the safety of our food supply, and the trustworthiness of our profession. <clears throat> As you begin your career, please know that you're all welcome and encouraged to reach out to the college if you have any questions or challenges that come up in your career. Again, thank you for inviting me here today. It's such an honor, and I wish you uh, continued success. success. Thank you very much, Dr. Wright. I hope you will join us June next year for convocation so you can celebrate with Steph as well. The Ontario Veterinary Medical Association is the organization that represents veterinarians and our profession's interests in the province. Dr. Heather Fretz is the president-elect of the OVMA and is a member of the OVC class of 1995. It's great to see you back at OVC. Dr. Fretz practiced small animal medicine at several hospitals in the Niagara region, most recently as a partner at Port, Port Colborne Animal Hospital. Currently, she leads the team at Vet Strategy, serving as Senior Director of Veterinary Talent Acquisition. Dr. Fretz pours her, pours her energy veterinary business development, 
agriculture and food production, building healthy teams, and advocating for the veterinary profession through volunteering on the Executive Committee of the Ontario Veterinary Medical Association. Dr. Fretz. Thank you so much, Dr. Hussein. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor for me to be here today on behalf of the Ontario Veterinary Medical Association to officially welcome you into the clinical portion of your education. I'm sure it's been a long road to get here, one that has likely had its share of challenges. And you deserve recognition for the hard work and dedication you've put into your learning so far. Over the next year, you'll move from lectures and labs into more hands-on, real-life experiences. You will learn valuable clinical skills and knowledge that will prepare you for your entry into the veterinary profession, no matter which career path you choose. I can still feel the mix of fear and excitement as Dr. Carol Matthews trusted me with overnight treatments as a student in ICU. However, the satisfaction of seeing that Rottweiler puppy with severe trauma go home with his family several weeks later was incredible. And I am sure there were many technicians watching over me that night. And now I know this was team medicine demonstrated before its time. Or the February rotation for calving season in Alberta, where I quickly learned very important skills, like how to defend myself from an angry cow with a new calf, or how to keep the labeling pen warm when blood sampling in minus 30 degree weather. The white coat you received today is a symbol of the trust and responsibility that you'll take on as you complete the final step in your journey to becoming a veterinarian. Over the next year, you will put your wealth of knowledge into practice and feel an overwhelming sense of purpose as you care for the deserving animals and help the people who love them. This is what you've been working so hard for and I encourage you to use this opportunity to be two things, courageous and curious. Try all the new things. Be okay with being uncomfortable and sometimes being wrong. Your confidence will grow quickly. Ask the questions, take the opportunities, and have fun. Truly enjoy this adventure and create your own story. As you move through your final year of school, remember that whether you're seeking assistance in finding veterinary employment, negotiating your first contract, or dealing with the stress of fourth year rotations, OVMA is here to help you. Please don't hesitate to contact us at any time. And as you consider which rotations to take, we invite you to consider OVMA's annual conference and student symposium as one of your options. It's a great way to augment your education in areas of interest to you and get a close-up look at the profession and the many potential career paths that it offers. OVMA is here to support you and we look forward to doing so throughout each stage of your veterinary career. And I just want to offer congratulations and wish all of you the best in the year to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Fretz. Such great words. The Canadian Veterinary Medical Association is the organization that represents veterinarians at the national level. Dr. Jim Fairless earned a DVM degree in 1980 and an MBA in 1999 from the University of Guelph. He worked in mixed private practice in Mount Forest, Ontario, and gained international experience in China. For 20 years, Dr. Fairless served as the client services veterinarian at the University of Guelph's Animal Health Laboratory until he recently retired, congratulations, in May 2023. 
Dr. Fairless has been a highly engaged veterinarian, having been involved in veterinary associations on a local, provincial, and national level. He is a past president of the CVMA and the Canadian Association of Swine Veterinarians. Dr. Fairless, I call you up to the podium. Madam Chair, fellow dignitaries, friends, family, colleagues, significant others, spouses, and especially the amethyst orcas. I do know a few of you. I'm looking at a couple right here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're starting on a great, a great journey here into fourth year. As a graduate of the Ontario Veterinary College and a past president of the CVMA, it is an honor and pleasure to address you on this memorable day, memorable day. I would like to extend greetings from Dr. Trevor Lawson, the president of the CVMA, and Dr. Tim Arthurs, president-elect. This, uh, this coincides with the CVMA committee weekend where all those involved with the CVMA are getting together to discuss uh, various national issues and, and animal welfare issues. Um, one of the things you may have seen, I've seen it on social media and I'm not sure it's hit the press or not, is they've had some meetings with MPs just to make sure, make sure that the veterinary workforce uh, issues that we're having are, are kept in the forefront. First, let me start off by congratulating you, the class of 2025. When you graduate, I'll be having my 45th anniversary as a, as a veterinarian. Um, for your hard work, perseverance, and commitment needed to get you here. I want to acknowledge the family and friends and, and mentors here today who have supported and nurtured you throughout your studies and would continue to do so as you continue on your journey of becoming a DVM. It is an honor and privilege to witness, witness you being presented with your white coat. So there's two things I'd like to leave you with today from, from my experiences in my 45 years in veterinary medicine. Number one, it's been mentioned, get involved. You get involved locally. Uh, I got involved with the Gray Bruce Veterinary Association. It was, you need to talk to your neighbors and friends, your colleagues, and, and find out what's going on. In the mid 80s, I was asked to, um, take over on what was the Ontario Veterinary Association then for a couple of years on someone that could not, uh, could not continue. And that was my segue into helping and organize veterinary medicine. The OVA, OVA became the Ontario Veterinary Medical Association and the uh, CVO. So get involved. There's lots of places. You, it was mentioned today, the Veterinarians Act. In the mid-80s, I got involved uh, in helping to formulate uh, the act at that time. You've got the opportunity here to put your two cents worth into, into what's happening in veterinary medicine today. Please do it. And, and then, the second thing is to take time for yourself. If you ask my wife, she said, I, I, it was a long time till I realized that I should be doing things like that, taking time for yourself. And uh, one of the things, obviously, is, is veterinary wellness is, is at the forefront now and, and making sure that, uh, that uh, you do continue on your journey. And uh, one of the things, I, when I got into practice, and I, uh, one of the senior partners took me aside and and said, Jim, and I don't know whether these percentages are right or not. A third of the time, they're going to get better despite you. A third of the time, you're going to do something and, make, and get them better. And a third of the time, you're going to try, but it's not going to be successful. I, I hope that is much less of a third, actually. So there's, no, there's going to be no yes and no's from now on. There's, there's going to, and the team aspect has been mentioned. But in everything, just make sure you take time for yourself. So I've got one, one thing I want you to do today on that, 
And that's no studying tonight. <laughs> I, mean, I think exams are coming up. I don't know anything. Hopefully there's none on Monday, but anyway. <laughs> Madam Chair. Woman. <laughs> the Ontario Veterinary College's Alumni Association links OVC with its graduates, which will soon be you. It's a very strong supporter of the college and of our student veterinarians. Dr. Paul Woods is a graduate of the Ontario Veterinary College. He is a professor of oncology in the Department of Clinical Studies here at the Ontario Veterinary College, and he also serves as co-director of the University of Guelph Institute for Comparative Cancer Investigation. Dr. Woods is board certified by the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine in both internal medicine and oncology. Dr. Woods. Thanks, Fred. Good evening, OBC class of 2025, the Amethyst Orcas. Welcome to final year. <laughs> Paul Woods, OBC class of 1985, the polar bears, <laughs> medical oncologist, and president of your Ontario Veterinary College Alumni Association. On behalf of the OVC Alumni Association, I'm pleased to join you for today's white coat ceremony, and I'd like to congratulate all of you on entering your clinical year. The past few years have been challenging ones, and I hope you feel incredibly proud of all that you have accomplished so far. Today, marks an important milestone in your journey towards becoming a veterinarian, and the OVC Alumni Association is honored to acknowledge this moment with you. You have been very adaptable, and now you get the opportunity to practice veterinary medicine with a safety net. The next year will bring incredible opportunities for clinical learning, professional growth, relationship building, and the chance to hone your clinical and personal skills. And when you're at Heather's OVMA conference next year, don't forget your OVC alumni has a reception at said conference. <laughs> if I can offer you a suggestion on how to make the most of your final year, it is continue your enthusiasm and curiosity that brought you to this point. Get the most of your final year while having fun. The OVC Alumni Association is proud to welcome you as student veterinarian members of the OVC Alumni Association and our future colleagues in the veterinary profession. We are pleased to have co-sponsored the white coats you will receive today as a symbol from your fellow OVC alumni who have walked this path before. I hope you enjoy the rest of your celebration today, and once again, congratulations. Thank you very much, Dr. Woods. Our final speaker is Dr. Michelle Guerin, who is an Associate Professor in the Department of Population Medicine here at OVC. She received her DVM degree from OVC and was in private practice for eight years, after which time she returned to OVC to complete her Master's and PhD degrees in Epidemiology. Dr. Guerin's major focus has been the development of a field-oriented poultry research and training program at the Ontario Veterinary College, especially in the areas of prevention and control of infectious diseases and the production of safe food. Dr. Guerin is also our DVM program's phase four leader at OVC, and in that role, she works very closely with our orcas to successfully navigate their year of clinical training. She's already spent quite a bit of time with the class getting them up and ready to go. Dr. Gurren, I invite you to the podium. Hello, orcas. We meet again, but under different and hopefully better circumstances. First, I want to welcome all of you to phase four. You made it. I'm sure time has gone both slowly and quickly since you first entered the halls of OVC. This year will be an exciting one for you and will likely come with a mix of emotions. It will be exhilarating, but it might also be stressful, tiring, and humbling. Looking back on my time as a final year vet student and now reflecting on my role as phase four leader, 
I would like to invite you to think about the following three words. Learn, teach, grow. Learn. OBC is a world-class veterinary college. This year will be the only time in your entire veterinary career when you will have a multitude of experts at your fingertips. Take advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity and learn everything you can, no matter how tired you feel. If you don't know something, look it up. If you do know something, show that you know it and do it with confidence. You might make mistakes, own up to them and learn from them. Make the effort to self-evaluate at every turn. Figure out what you are good at and what you need to improve on. If you are lacking critical skills, seek out opportunities to get experience and practice along the way. Your contribution to patient care is crucial and your voice is important. So be an active member of the veterinary team for every patient you are responsible for. I guarantee that the more you actively participate, the more satisfying your phase four experience will be. Teach. If I were a betting person, I bet that each one of you will have had at least one aha moment this year. You know, when the light bulb goes on and all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. Soak in that feeling. Let those moments invigorate you and drive you forward. Let those moments also motivate you to help others. Each one of you will meet different people and see and do different things during your externship and rotations. So if you see a classmate struggling with something, I encourage you to take the opportunity to teach. For example, you might have been lucky enough to have so much practice at placing IV catheters that you can do it in your sleep. Perhaps someone gave you some pointers along the way that you can now share with one of your classmates. Or maybe your experiences have given you a better understanding of the intricacies of managing diabetic patients. This is your opportunity to help someone else finish the puzzle so that they can have their aha moment. I guarantee that your teaching moments will be as satisfying as solving any complex case you come across. Grow. I'm always amazed by the transformation students make between their first semester in phase one and the day they walk out the doors of OBC. Their knowledge, skills, and confidence grow steadily as they transition from student to veterinarian. Entitlement has no place in veterinary medicine, but humility does. Remember those soft skills you demonstrated during your admission interview? The ones that helped you get into the DVM program? Compassion, empathy, good judgment, communication, and so on. Those skills are now more important than ever, and you need to be cognizant of these in every case you manage and every interaction you have. Practice them diligently every day. You might fall short of expectations. If that happens, accept constructive criticism humbly, reflect, and endeavor to improve. Strive for excellence in everything you do because your patients and clients are counting on you. I guarantee that the more you grow, the more satisfying your entire veterinary career will be. My role as phase four leader, as some of you are aware, I'm still relatively new to this position and might not have all the answers. If I don't know something, I will look it up. If I mis make mistakes, I will own up to them and learn from them. I will remember my soft skills and practice them diligently. And I will make the effort to self-evaluate at every turn to help make this critical, formative year meaningful for you. Because by the end, we want to make sure that each one of you has earned the right to call yourself Doctor of Veterinary Medicine and are positioned to make a valuable contribution to this amazing profession. We're in this together, and together we will each learn, teach, and grow. Welcome to phase four. Thank you very much, Dr. Guren. Such words, your patients and your clients are counting on you. That really resonated with me. Okay, it's time.
will now be presenting to each member of the Amethyst Orcas their white coat. Each year, our students, while in the third year of the program, choose one of four streams of study in order to focus their training throughout their clinical phase four year. This is so that they gain the experience needed in order to feel ready for their specific anticipated career plans after graduation. The streams of training are equine, food animal, rural community practice, and small animal. As we present our OVC 2025 ORCAs to you momentarily, we will have a slideshow to share with you which stream of training they have selected. Please note that the pictures in this slideshow were taken of your ORCA during their first month in the DVM program. <laughs> stand row by row as signaled by Elizabeth. Are you signaling them, Elizabeth? Yes? I think you are. And when I read out your name and your stream, please come to the front where Dr. Richtel and Dr. Gurren will present you with your white coat, at which time you will pause so that a photo can be taken by our photographer, Grant Martin. Then please return to your seat. To our audience, there are 117 orcas to present today. That is a lot of clapping. We will do a round of applause to the entire class at the end, so please don't feel obliged to clap your way through the entire list, but you're welcome to. But do pace yourselves. <laughs> but of course, you are more than welcome. No, in fact, you are encouraged to whoop it up loudly at the time that you're Orca's name is announced, and they don their white coat. As we know, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> we know this is we know this is an immensely exciting and proud time for both you and your orca. So please do enjoy and celebrate that moment. Okay, are we all ready? We're good to go. Isabel Bates. 
from West Montrose, Ontario. <laughs> Creating a traffic jam, sorry. <laughs> Solène Bellion from Paris, yeah. Michaela, Michaela Boutillier, sorry, Addison Carr from Flagstaff, Arizona. from Hong Kong. <laughs> Caitlin Chang from Markham, Ontario. <laughs> Emily Sharavati from Kitchener, Ontario. from Markham, Ontario. <laughs> Jessica Chu from London, Ontario. <laughs> Liam Church McGinty. <laughs> Antonia de Groot from <laughs> Emily Dews from Oakville, Ontario. <laughs> Alexandra Dorch from Waterloo, Ontario. from London, Ontario. <laughs> Melissa Favero from Grimsby, Ontario. Natasha Grego from Stony Creek, Hamilton, Ontario. <laughs> Daniel Guevara Mann from Holland Landing, Ontario. <laughs> Nicole Gogolski from New York City, New York.
Megan Goot from St. Bernadette, Ontario. Sean is unfortunately not able to be with us today. I know, right? Cindy He from Mississauga, Ontario. Shayla Hurley from Dundas, Ontario. <laughs> Nicole Irushi from Toronto, Ontario. <laughs> Summer Jarvis from Aurelia, Ontario. <laughs> from Six Come on, Laura. 
from Brampton, Ontario. Jordan Macko from Forest, Ontario.
from Buffalo, New York. Caroline Pasquier from Embrun, Ontario. Emily Patterson from Hawkesbury, Ontario. from Huntsville, Ontario. <laughs> Julie Peterson from Newmarket, Ontario. Maria Teresa Perez from Mississauga, Ontario.
Nina Stanikovich from Niagara Falls, Ontario. Mark Sinerich from Toronto, Ontario. from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. <laughs> Carly Tarantini from Sault Ste. Marie. Sorry. <laughs> Could I? <laughs> Jonathan Vinn. 
Suzanne Hoffman from the University's Commu Computing and Communication Services, and Kevin Hogg from the College's Information Technology Services, who is enabling us to provide a live global webcast of this event and video recording it to capture it for posterity. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks, too, to our photographer, Grant Martin, who has to turn the camera around. There you go. And of course, I'd like to thank once again Dr. Anthony Abrams Ogg, OBC's very own Piper. As your Master of Ceremonies, not only do I have to compete with all the racket, but I also get the chance for the last word. Not only have I served as your Associate Dean over the past three years, but I've also worked with you closely in the sequential clinical medicine courses, and I've proudly watched you grow your skills and as individuals. Along with the platform of speakers that you heard from today, I too feel a strong vested interest in ensuring that the final year is a successful and fun and wonderful time for each one of you. As an overarching theme to the coming year, in addition to all the medicine and surgery you will practice and grow your skills in, you will also learn a lot about yourself and how to navigate changing work environments almost weekly, work teams and interpersonal interactions. Learning to manage challenges as a team, to mitigate conflict, and to help lift each other up towards success are truly valuable skills that you will also be building this year in every situation on every rotation. Finally, but no less importantly, I encourage you to make personal growth a priority learning how to balance the rigorous demands of the clinical environment with your needs to maintain wellness and to build resilience, to remain whole as a person. Amethyst orcas, support each other's learning as well as your own. Take care of each other. Be a team player and stay connected to your fellow orcas. As we close the formal part of our program today, I also want to sincerely thank all the family members, friends, loved ones, and mentors for attending, either in person or virtually, and for the important support that you provide to your favorite ORCA. It means a great deal to them and to us at OBC. ORCAs, Let's take a moment for you to stand and turn and thank your people for their support with a round of supplies. for some refreshments. It is a great time to meet all of the classmates, the friends that have supported your ORCA up to this point. An important announcement before I call on the piper. ORCAs, please assemble on the side steps of Rosansky, that's this building, on the side steps, for the white coat class photo at 6.40. That's 20 minutes from now, okay? And, and family and friends, please hold them accountable to that time. So we'll see you on the steps at 640. Please stay seated until the piper has piped out the platform party. And I wish you all a safe journey home. I hope you enjoy some wonderful celebrations here in Guelph tonight 
with your ORCA. Thank you, everybody. Good night. I think we're piping the orcas out too. <laughs> Take care. Bye for now.